Major funding for A Cow Among the Cosmos is brought to you by... The Municipal Science Foundation. Mark Bruce. He just keeps on finding money. Quarks. And from contributions from viewers like you. Thank you. Discovering new technologies. Physics gain sounds. Crazy Fishman Warren Mazettes of Mazano's Fish and Chips. Dark Matter. And Alfred E. Smith. I say to my older self, well, let's say, uh, let's say old Chase goes to university, does a physics thing, and he, uh, he's, on a, he's on a spaceship because he's going to Mars, right? So I'm going to spin around again, actually, and uh, that'll be old Chase. Okay, no, hell, before I came. Okay, okay, okay. Replink, replink, okay. We'll just cut that part out. If I was talking to older Chase, I would probably ask him, where is he going? And then older Chase would be all like, I'm going to Mars, you see? And then I'd be like, but why? And that's what we're trying to answer at Physics Club today. That's what I think we're trying to do. So, as a member of the payload team, uh, our job is to build the housing for like all the equipment, like such, which we put everything into. So, what we have here is we got ourselves an icosahedron. Martin. Okay, we we'll only have the numbers. Which one do you want? Might hold yours up. That's how many is cool. The one on that one. Okay, so we got nine here. <laughs> All right. So, looks like we're gonna go with the costumes. I would say that probably one of the biggest problems with using such a shape is the fact that there's so many faces, which kind of makes it hard to build, but. It also decreases structural integrity a bit due to the fact that you need to glue it, which provides weak points along the uh, along the surface, or not the surface, but I guess weak points in the paint. There we go. That's what I'm trying to say. Hey guys, I've arrived. Oh damn, this is serious glue. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Put a little in that. There you go. You got some at the edge too. <laughs> Let's start it. I'm on the payload team, so uh, my role uh, is not 
that much more important than anybody else in the payload team, but the payload team mostly designs and constructs the payload, which is the frame or the, the shell in which uh, all of our experiment and our, uh, our ad really fits in. Think of it like the, uh, like the foundation of society, if society was a physics club. Uh, <laughs> right now, we just, we're just uh, shaving triangles so that they, they fit. It's a lot of gluing, a lot of snipping and filing. The construction is not very entertaining. It's uh, cause, you know you, you know what's going to happen. But uh, the design's lots of fun. We picked uh, an icosahedron for the shape. Movie magic will make an icosahedron appear here. It probably won't. Uh, <laughs> but an icosahedron, boy, now that's a shape. It's just triangles, which is so cool. A triangle, the stronger shape. Um, and so a shape that's made of triangles, that's got to be pretty strong. Now I'm a scientist, so I know that. For, like, well, we're gonna glue these today, and we're gonna do the two tops, and then after this tomorrow we can fit the rest of it together. So okay. if it doesn't work, okay. Just leave. So it, it's okay. Yeah. So we but can have two seventeens and then seventeen point five. Yes. Okay. Sounds good. <laughs> I mean, as leader, I get all the heat on me, right? So I basically need to rally the team, but we all end up doing the work together, right? We build it, we do it, and I guarantee you that this piece is going to come back with all the instruments intact. Icosahedron. That is the shape. It is an icosahedron. The payload is an icosahedron. We're gonna paint it like a cow, and then we'll have a floating icosahedral cow somewhere in the atmosphere. That's pretty funny. I found that really funny in the design process. Well, I have an idea of where everything's supposed to go. I still have no clue how some things will fit on the outside. Or the inside for that matter. But We'll see, when they should uh, solve all that. Okay, so hi guys, I'm Noah, 
and I'm the leader of the electronics team for the MMC Physics Club. Yeah, we should start working on today. Probably save the Geiger counter for last. This is the easiest one to set up. Okay. It's just reading, uh, what is it, like an analog signal out of it. So the Geiger counter is easy. Here's the pressure sensor, and then the other one's like a gyroscope. There's two sensors there. And then the carbon dioxide sensor. Um, I just joined because I didn't even know, honestly, we were doing this whole thing with the Hab. I thought we were just doing it just because, hey, I want to learn some extra physics at lunch, and it turns out, hey, we're launching this thing, and I was like, just like, completely like excited for it and everything. And yeah, I never even expected to contribute as much as I have, and I'm happy. Okay, so what the electronics team is doing is we are using Arduinos, which are little microcontrollers like these right here. This is an Arduino that we'll probably be using. And what does is kind of like the brains behind our whole like balloon project or whatever. So it's running all of our sensors and it's collecting and storing all of our data in it. So to use it with the Arduino, it has to be either FAT16 format or FAT32 format. This one that I got, that Mr. Joseph gave me, it's extra FAT format, so it's like the newest model, right? So I had to reformat it down to FAT32, and we started with a 64 gigabyte SD card, and now it's 3.9. Uh, so for the data that we're going to be collecting this year, we're going to be registering our radiation again, so the alpha particles in the atmosphere. We're going to be using um, altitude, the pressure, the temperature, and we're currently in the middle of trying to get the CO2 sensor up and running, which is a quite the endeavor. Okay, I understand. Okay, let's just. This is electronics. Team <laughs> electronics guys are. So if you just go straight up. Hey. Put the chunks out. Yeah. Team turned into the science team. Oh, yeah. Do we get anything? I heard, five away. I, heard, I, heard, I, heard, I, heard, I saw it go to five. Second, go to five. We can stop the hours. They were using Alka-Seltzer to test their uh, their CO2 detector. That was my Alka-Seltzer, that was my dinner. And they just took it. They didn't even ask me. They just, they just assumed no one was gonna eat that. I was gonna eat that. It's not increasing much because there's too much other stuff. Hey guys, here's what I've concluded. Update from all the other groups. Update number one. They want to know our exact weight. And I said, that's personal information. Some examples of Arduinos. This is an Arduino Nano, so it's a lot smaller than the regular Arduino. It weighs a lot less and everything, so it's cool. But it doesn't have as much power as a full-size Arduino, so we're going to go for something more like this one right here. So for the sensors that we ran this year, we ran a Geiger counter, which was the same one that we did last year. We did a carbon dioxide sensor, and we measured the pressure, the altitude, and the temperature as we went up. That's fine. One time I was trying to say Smarties or Skills, but instead I just said Smarties. This is like four months ago, and I still think about it like every week. So we had a lot of we had a lot of issues when we were running our carbon dioxide sensor because like it was being super unreliable and we were figuring out how to calibrate it and the resources online weren't very in depth with it. So it was really like a lot of trial and error to try and get it to work properly. So I remember what you say, so it doesn't work very well anymore. Um, did you bring that soldering iron thing that you won? Oh no, I didn't. I should have brought that out of office. I was gonna bring it, but it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Artistry. <laughs> yeah, it's a school wire. Oh, those are your wires. So the problem we think we were having was the wires we were using before with the Gary counter gave us some weird like malfunctions and then as soon as we changed them to a different kind of wires it actually fixed pretty much most of our problems so it's good. Yeah, we're gonna change it. Uh Jamie, did you find wires or is this? Yeah, sadly we weren't actually able to use our gyroscope or accelerometer because like oh man, I don't even remember the problems we had with it now. It was really hard though. Oh, like to get the data, like the raw data that came off of the sensor was like, we had to do like a ton of like super advanced math and stuff to actually change it in some, into something we can interpret properly. So we just ultimately just decided to scrap it because yeah. Yeah, it's 232. But I mean, it's funny. I think what you do is you merge the data with the APR to actually get better altitude. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, we're super excited. Everything is coming along great. It's all going according to plan. Uh, we have a little bit more work to do tonight, but hopefully we'll power through and finish it up and, you know, see how this works out tomorrow. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be awesome. So, 
on the day of the launch, um, for next year we're definitely going to solder all of our connections together because probably one of the biggest issues we had this year was that we just kind of like placed the pins in and then tried to tape them down a little bit. But the thing was like they kept, they'd fall out like if we rocked things around a little bit like some of the pins would fall out. The off tire we're met with. You push that off. Okay. And then where's one? Another one. Yeah. One goes to so one. yeah, we need, like this is the last thing that goes on. Is the is the uh, okay, we're gonna use one wire. So, so uh, do you guys need to do you need to attach the Arduino to the uh, to the top panel? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, there's wires that are gonna run. They're gonna, gonna run through. through. Yeah. All right. Look at the thermal gun. As well as we had to wire everything on the spot too. So obviously that's like prone to error, and we actually made a mistake in our wiring, which made our um, our temperature sensor not function for a second. So we had to actually like go back and fix that which was good, and yeah, so definitely like, for next year, we're gonna be soldering absolutely everything we can. No, it's not going anywhere now, like it's it's fine. Like we're not gonna lose it. Okay, we're good. We'll, sh we'll shove it in right at the end. Okay, uh, let's wire let's wire this up now, and we gotta, I wanna read the sensor data off of it to make sure, as well as the CO2, okay? Yeah, it's playing good. Yeah, it's 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 good. Yeah, And do is get the same so by the time we get all the way to to here-ish the balloon will be way up here right and then what we do here from this point here is we just let go and then the balloon will launch itself and if it gets stuck we have someone here to just cut so for flight team we had to put together everything so we had to tie the parachute to the balloon we had to put all the knots which was kind of nerve-wracking and we had to track the balloon and find its landing spot. Sokotoa. Sokotoa, you cannot use the 90 degree angle. Okay, well then find this angle. <laughs> find that angle. You cannot find it with only one value. Okay, find <laughs> this. It's kind of sad, like the pace for further like years where they could just keep doing it. Yeah. And, like over years have that measurement. Oh, okay, that's a good one. First one is we're going to have a chip on the outside of the hab, which will detect CO2 in the atmosphere. That was Fabio's idea. And then second, we are setting up a test tube with a bacteria, um, and we're going to see the effects of radiation and um, temperature and stuff on it. Then we're going to bring that back, and we'll have some that we kept down here. Um, and then we're going to grow it on a plate, and we're going to compare to see um, if it grows any faster or slower, and if it has a different form or stuff like that. We're just like, we want to send something living, but we didn't, you have to have a reason to send something living. So <laughs> we realistically chose bacteria, and that's what we're doing now, but our first thoughts were like, a rat, and that was gonna die. But then, yeah. like, and then we wouldn't learn anything okay. from the that. The thoughts were like, a Madagascar hissy cockroach, because if it lived, it would be a pet after for me. 
That's why I wanted it. I'd buy it. And if it died, then it would show something, I guess, but that didn't happen. We went to this expo thingy today. Hab Expo. What was it called? Hab Symposium. <laughs> Hab Symposium, which means a uh, high altitude balloon. <laughs> we did a scavenger hunt. Uh, I ate I ate six burrito things, and then uh, after that we just asked some questions like why we can't use hydrogen in our high altitude balloon. Although technically we can, there's nothing actually holding us back. Uh, hi, my name is uh, Martin. I am in grade twelve. Uh, Okay, weakest link within the science group is definitely Martin. Um, he won't let go of the idea of using hydrogen instead of helium, even though we have helium, and hydrogen is so much more dangerous. So hydrogen is like probably the most important element. Helium is just this little, little bitch who stole the H. So like, he's like, man, I want to be like hydrogen, so I'm just going to steal the H, but add a little E. Like, we should use hydrogen, because uh, it's only dangerous if exposed to an electric current or, like, a spark. So as long as none of those happen, it should be fine, in theory. Overall, though, I think um, Matthew Mora definitely is the weakest link. Um, he just, you can tell he just hasn't been putting in his all this year. It's just very disappointing, very disappointing. I'm thinking, deep in thought. Don't ask me. I'm just the payload guy. Three, two, two one, one box. Uh, the LCD screen that we did was probably one of my favorite parts um, that we did for the electronics team this year. Um, what we did was we displayed the whole time the HAP was up in the air, it would display a, a little screen that said MMC Physics 2019, I think it was, right? A couple other things we did was it was going to display a message um, when it was like at minus 30 and then it was going to display another message when we reached a certain altitude point as well as a credits, like a oh, credits little slide. Quickly, before he sees. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Thursday instead, just because of the weather. So, um, hopefully that doesn't make any big changes for any of you. Is everyone here still planning on attending if it's on Thursday?
get the cell phone charger completely charged, right? Yeah. We power the Arduino with all the sensors until it's depleted. Do you think... Do you think we only have to run it like once and then we can determine how many more batteries we're going to need? So we'll probably add the rest of batteries, I would say. Yeah. Well, no, because this is the, there's still going to be other things. Like, uh, that. I mean, that's going to be 400, but they're still taking parts out of that to fit the cameras in. They're still going to put the velcro straps on that. So we're, it, we're, we're in the right ballpark for where we, where we need to be. Yeah, so we're not going to fill the rest up with batteries, but we're. I think we're fine. Like, I think I think we're, we're over worrying about this, but I mean... The APRS had three batteries in it, it worked the entire time and the battery still are still working. Nothing, eh? Just give me one second. Oh, is that us? Oh, wait! Yes, I got it! I'm really excited about tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna be super fun. I can't wait to like launch the balloon, get it up there, and then look at our footage after. It's so cool seeing um, like the the results, I'm really excited to see what happens with the bacteria. I'm excited to see like what the uh, CO2 concentration is. I'm excited to see the the footage from the 360 degree camera. I'm just like I'm really excited. I'm not nervous. Last year I was nervous. This year I'm not. Hey, I think we popped. You think we popped? Yeah. We got to what? 20, we got to 28,000 feet. Oh, uh, 20, basically 29. 29,000 meters. Then we now are at 26. At the beginning, we were scared about the speed of it dropping just in case the parachute did not deploy because we did put our parachute a little bit too close to the balloon, we figured out at launch day. Miss Buffy was a little more worried than I'm not trying to throw her under the bus, but she, there was a little more panic in her voice. I knew that the atmosphere was thinner up there, so the parachute, even though it opened, would take a while to actually slow down the hab. So initially we were getting like a 15, 20 meter per second descent rate. It would slowly just decelerate and it went from like 15 to about 12 to about 10 to 7. Stayed at 7 for a bit and then dropped down below 5, which is what we shot for.
So right now we're working on the bacteria and what we're observing is just how the harsh climates and the kind of extremities that the bacteria had to face, such as like radiation and cold, and it's like how it was affected. So um, we got a bacterium sample of uh, Bacillus subtilis. Um, so we kept one sample on the ground, we kept one sample in the payload, and now they're now doing smears every few days to compare them and see how they're changing and how they're different. Um, yeah, this is my last year in Mel's back, so I'll be moving on to TCI next year as teaching physics there, so I'm really excited that I've like gotten the job that I really want, and hopefully next year I can... Oh my god, <laughs> I'm so embarrassed right now. Um, hopefully next year I can do how to do balloon with some students at that school, so... Yeah, it's like very bittersweet. I'm very sad to leave and leave this project. But I'm excited to hopefully start somewhere else. And if not, I'll come to <laughs> come help out at Mel's Mike next year. <laughs> I always enjoy just the time that we spend together working on this stuff, either pre-launch or during the launch, during the day and, and the retrieval. I think we always, I always have just have a really good time uh, spending that time with the students, seeing what you guys can do with the, with the what the physics club is actually capable of doing because it's always amazing. I'm always very, very impressed. I just want to thank everybody for their hard work and um, their passion and interest in this project because, again, without you amazing students, we could have never um, made this work.